Good evening. Coming up on tonight's broadcast... I think it's scumbag behaviour. True Parliament stories. Sainsbury, will you f up? We snuggle up to the media machine behind the beehive. We target the kings and queens of talkback. Spit it out. And the truth about tabloid. And when you're a TV celebrity, you're only as good as your last show. And if your last show was a year ago, you've got to keep your image out there. Paparazzi or bullshitarazzi, we help you spot the difference. All that and your letters to me. A point across to talkback hosts is never easy. But imagine how hard it is for a stutterer or a stammerer. Patience and understanding go a long way. But in the cut and thrust of mindless radio blather, some of our top talk professionals are seriously lacking. How would our talk show hosts deal with a stuttering caller interrupting the flow of their shows? We hired a man with a pronounced stutter to test some of our foremost broadcasters. Yeah, I don't, I, I, I don't mind doing that. First up, In veteran case, sportscaster no Murray Deaker. Well, we've got a caller online. Barry, you've got a question. Um, why do you think it... 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 Spit it out. It... I don't think we're going to get the question. After just 11 seconds, Deke cuts in, then tries to guess our caller's question. Why do I think, or why do we think, that there has been a split? And gets it entirely wrong. It is time now for Talkback, and in Talkback today... Mary Lambie claims to have interviewed over 10,000 people, but all that experience counted for little when confronted by our stutterer. Morning, Bob. Uh, m m morning, Mary. How, how are you? Excellent, thanks. I, I, I think these these emissions should... should, should should be introduced, I think, is what you're trying to say, Bob. Thank you, Bob. Lambie comes in at eight seconds, and worse, barely contains a smirk. There and there. Not a good sign to give a struggling speaker. Lambie's attempt to finish our stutterer's question seemed helpful, but was it? Speech experts say no. The person who stutters finds it a little bit humiliating for someone else to finish off their sentences. Nationwide Afternoon Talk with Danny Watson. Over at News Talk ZB, Danny Watson proved he's come a long way since spot on days. Hello, Eddie. It's Eddie here, mate. Yep. Uh, did you ever see the, Danny, the, 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 ce the ceiling opened up to the, to the stars? Never. The... 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 And the... 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 the, the Take a big breath, Eddie. Take a big breath. Take a deep breath and just relax for a minute. To say things like, take a breath, relax, take your time, is not particularly helpful. The... 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 the Eddie, when the, did they stop opening the ceiling? Because I never saw that ceiling ever open, and I'm sure there's a lot of people that the, didn't even know it ever opened. The... 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 the, the you're going, to have, you, you're going to have to take a breath, Eddie. Watson set the standard for patience, allowing our stutter a staggering 64 seconds to get it right. Be patient, allow them to finish off their own sentences. Um, try not to be rushed. But how would these efforts stack up against the godfather of New Zealand talkback, Leighton Smith? News talks to be 11.29, Eddie, morning. Uh, morning, Leighton, it's Eddie here. I've got, I'm just standing outside here, uh, uh, Leighton, uh, and it's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day for, for quite a while. That's terrific, Eddie. I uh, hope, it, hope now, it stays that way. Now, I wanted to, to touch on a, a couple of things. Uh, the first thing is, that, look, Leighton, I went to uh, intermediate school uh, in the in a no, no, 1960s here, here in Auckland. They... Just hang on, Eddie. It's 11.30. Smith allowed just six seconds before seeking refuge in some headlines. A disappointing end to our experiment. 
none of us like to be cut off. For stuttering treatment and support, contact START. When it comes to subtlety, television promos are right up there with third degree burns. Spoken promos over the end of credits can be particularly offensive. But when it comes to complete crassness, you can't beat the Australians. You may remember the Hitler miniseries that screened on TV One recently. When the final credits rolled, the grim toll of Adolf's reign was documented. New Zealand television resisted the temptation to tell us about the latest scandal on Coro, but across the Tasman at Melbourne's Channel 7, there was no such restraint. At 8.30 tomorrow, following room for improvement, suspicions arrive at All Saints when Terry learns Vincent may be implicated in Rose's murder. Just who do you trust when your reputation's on the line? The Aussie medical show Melbourne voted number one, All Saints. Then at 9.30, Jordan's jaunt into the dating scene ends abruptly when her date dies. But next on 7, join the team on the couch talking footy. That's what they saw in Melbourne. Here's what they saw in Sydney. Next Monday night, enjoy the Great Outdoors shopping special. And this is no ordinary shopping spree. This is serious shop till you drop around the world shopping. Whether you're into antiques, cars, clothes or kids' toys, we take you from bargain hunting to the top destinations. Don't miss the Great Outdoors shopping special from 7.30 next Monday on 7. Coming up, Buffy. That's very inappropriate. What were they thinking? Coming up, how to spot fake paparazzi Helen Clark reaches boiling point and the celebrity share market. But first, some champagne television. Nominated for most spirited performance in a live broadcast, Treasure Island star Horse on the Sports Cafe. Terry Nakin playing Auckland this weekend. <laughs> How do you think it's going to go, Horse? Well, you know as well as I do, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are all losing it enough again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, with the uh, ideal growing conditions. Uh... <laughs> yeah, no, no. Do you no, no. either have a gun under your own control? Or... Uh, yeah, I had 12 of them. <laughs> Pick and choose. <laughs> Make my day. <laughs> 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 How many could you stuff in your mouth at once? <laughs> 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 Peter, if, honestly, if you saw him, his name's Dello, Simon Dello. He's married to Alison Moore. She's also a newsreader. He copies you almost identically. If you saw it, you'd come, honestly, you'd smack him. You'd smack him real hard in the head. You would. You really, really would. When the All Blacks last bombed at the World Cup, they returned home to find that airport staff had written losers on their baggage. So obviously we don't take losing badly. And neither does the media. The Sunday News captured the mood using a headline that last had an outing in British tabloids following 9-11. The News also managed to knock out two editions and had extensive disaster coverage on pages 2, 3, 4, 5, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63 and 64. Rachel and Robbie by the pool. Holmes and Fleur frolicking. Hosking buying treasures. These and many other paparazzi images are etched into our brains, along with childhood beatings and sexual awakenings. But can they be trusted? Every week, New Zealanders buy some 300,000 women's magazines. Sure, there's some recipes, advice columns and the latest diet, but the tastiest piece of bait is celebrity gossip, and in particular, paparazzi photography. It's a guilty pleasure that most of us succumb to, but can we really believe what we see? Or are some of these unauthorised moments as fake as a hooker's Chanel handbag? Paparazzi is not a mainstay of the country's most read magazine, the New Zealand Woman's Weekly, but editor Nikki Pellegrino is certainly qualified when it comes to spotting a setup. We don't do any paparazzi, we don't use any paparazzi shots in the magazine. We certainly wouldn't do the setup ones because I think that it's cheating the reader. As a former editor of the Weekly and of Women's Day, Wendell Nissen has seen it all and is shameless about her own history of bullshit arazzi. Um, I can remember one example where Tanya Lomu was moving out of the Lomu house when she split up with Jonah and uh, it was, I was editor at the time, it was a cover of Women's Day and she's walking past holding a big framed picture of him. 
<laughs> as she moved up. I mean, that was obviously a setup. Um, but you know, it made a good cover, and as far as I'm concerned, I pay the paparazzi guy the money if he he chooses to share half of that with Tanya for walking across a street holding a picture of Jonah, then that's his business. Do you think it's the right to trick readers like that? Um, I don't think I was tricking readers. They saw a picture of Tanya walking out of the home with a picture of her, her former husband. They bought it. Rachel and Robbie. Oh, yes. Is this set up? It has the hallmarks, I think. We've got two people here who both really badly want to make it in America and perhaps aren't quite cracking the American market as fast as they want, so, you know, it doesn't do them any harm to get together and perhaps get a bit of excitement going about themselves. And are these photos of another Lomu X really stolen moments taken by mercenary paparazzi? What I would say is quite often they come with a story and a friend is very liberally quoted in the story and has an awful lot of information and quite often then it's a little bit suspicious and you have to wonder if that friend is in fact the subject of the story. And since Bill Rolston announced his ban on TV1 newsreaders selling their stories to the tabloids, bullshit Arazi could be more popular than ever. Won't Bill Rolston though look at those photos and go, you got paid by paparazzi to do that, I'm not stupid, I know exactly what you're up to. How's he going to prove it? I don't know. No. See, um... Well, they're, they're well, going to so have to lie it... to him. No, it's... <laughs> lie? Television? So for someone like Susan Wood, who is no longer allowed to sell stories to tabloids, bullshit Arazi could be the back door to career-building publicity and tax-free cash. Definitely not a setup. Susan Ward has been pretty vocal about how she feels about paparazzi photography. She really loathes it. So I would say this is just them walking the dog, having a chat, and a photographer being around and getting some pictures. The fact that he has the poo bag tied to the leash, mm. does that maybe you sure that's not something that, that seems to be? I think that's a me. signal I've never or something. Seen that before. You it's like the guy with the umbrella in, the, in JFK assassination. He's walking around with this bag here. So as soon as I tie the bag, poo bag to the leash. I think that's a good idea. Tying your poo bag to your leash is responsible dog ownership. That's what I mean. And it also looks like responsible dog ownership. Is it a little bit too good? You sold your family to the Woman's Day? Sold out. How much money did you get for that? About 25k, I think. That's not no, bad. No, joking. That's not bad. If it was like that. Look, obviously. That's not bad. No, just think. If you've seen Jason Gunn and the family on the magazine, I mean, really, how many people have they been through before they get to Jason Gunn? I mean, how many people have said, no, not this week, sorry? 15 grand. 15 grand? How much are you, 15 Let's take grand? a couple of zeros off that baby, shall we? 1,500. I was paying them. One thousand five hundred. Seriously. Ten grand. Oh, ten no. grand. A new kitchen. No. I sold it. Five. Cheap. No. Less. I, I'm telling you. I'm, tell, dude, I'm dude, telling you. Dude, you got Perhaps if I did. Perhaps if I did. This sort of thing here. Yeah. You see, now we could five or ten k it, couldn't we? But then, would you buy me? I really? would. Do you oh, think yeah. it would? Would it sell? Oh yeah. I it mean. Would sell. Are you telling the truth? Yeah, totally. I, I would sell. I'd rather have you around the other way. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> it would sell. All right. Well, that would probably then have to be it the centre so, spread in that case, it wouldn't It would not? so sell. <laughs> so I admit that I am not immune to the disease of celebrity. As hard as I try to resist, I can't help but be consumed by the trivial details of those trivial lives which dominate our media. Which begs the question, what does Charlotte Dawson's crotch smell like in real life? <laughs> Still to come, the PM blows a gasket and we begin counting down the greatest all-time moments of New Zealand telly history. 
to the celebrity share market now, where Rocker Thocko's mum will have to wait another four years to get on the weekly. Holmes has been forgiven, but Ralston's tabloid ban will hit him hard. Sally Ridge is up after bravely putting on some scary makeup. Treasure Island and Eyeliner is paid off for Michael Laws, and Han Shanty Die slips badly after telling the Woman's Weekly that he believes in aliens. When it comes to generating news, the Prime Minister's weekly press conference is right up there with Nicky's breasts, Umanga's knees and Paul's balls. Every Monday at 3pm, Helen Clark fronts up to the men and women of the Parliamentary Press Gallery. Tonight, in part one of an exclusive investigation, we take you to the very heart of power in Aotearoa. It's Monday afternoon, and in just under an hour, Helen Clark will give her weekly press conference, helping to fill column inches and providing sound bites for the 6 o'clock news. Dan, a chatty cameraman from a Canadian-owned TV channel, is first on the scene. You obviously don't yell at any questions yourself sometimes. Do you need, feel oh, the need to? Sometimes I've felt like I've needed to, wanted to ask questions, but I'll leave it to the reporters. Um, Do you ever yell at bullshit? Oh, just maybe under, under my breath. I sort of go, oh, that's it. Bullshit. Yeah, like yeah that's, that. a, that's a crock, eh? Hey? So do you know things to watch out for, whether Helen's upset or whether she's happy? Yes, she gets quite a not noticeable sway. And if, you, if it gets real bad, there's a bit of a lip quiver. quiver. Is that right? Yeah. You don't sometimes see dribble like urine dribbling down. Each week, a select group of journos gather in the Beehive Theatreette and await the words of the most powerful woman in the land. There's a the GE protest that's going to take place out the front of Parliament. Barry Soper is a likeable old wicker from the old school who reports for the News Talk ZB network. Does, uh, do you know when she's getting upset or angry? Is there certain signs that, you know, when people have pissed her off? It's one thing that Clark does fairly obviously is body language, and I think you can tell. But at these, normally for her, it's not that difficult. She's uh, pretty well prepared when she comes in here. I mean, I remember I've been coming here for over 20 years, and I remember uh, Rob Muldoon many years ago uh, said to me, uh, if you're going to ask a question like that, I'm going to raise my your accreditation with the Speaker. Uh. Now, um, that was outrageous, and somebody who leapt to my defence at the time was Bill Ralston. Uh. Bill said, that's outrageous, you can't do that. Well, sure enough, Muldoon raised the accreditation with the Speaker, and uh, f that fortunately for me, the uh, snap election bell rang, so that was the end of the matter, but uh, who would have known what he might have done? And uh... Close to midnight and in high spirits, the Prime Minister with the announcement that shocks the nation. That doesn't give you much time to run up to an election, Prime Minister. Doesn't give my opponents much time to run up to an election, does it? But what a lot of people don't know is after Sir Robert announced the snap election, he came through this door, walked down this hallway here, and of course the curvature of the beehive meant that he got slightly disorientated, started feeling sick, leant over here, vomited mainly fluid and bits of corn, and wiped, spat, wiped his face like this, and then proceeded through here. If you asked a question and um, he wasn't sure of the answer, he would always throw it back at you and say, for a start, well, I, can you ask that question again? Or he would throw the question back at you, whereas Clark, I think, is probably more upfront about answering questions, although she's been likened on a number of occasions to Rob Muldoon, and she's pretty, pretty doctrinaire, which is what Muldoon was, so they're not dissimilar in that way. Like a southerly in slacks, Helen breezes into the room and the journos fall silent. You can't help feeling the power and the respect and the fear that goes with it, or wondering what it would be like to be Helen Clark, to be the Prime Minister. Hello, welcome everybody. Uh, yes, no, Fish and Buckle, uh, have we have commissioned them to build one weapon of mass destruction. Jan had actually got access to uh, her keys, and we said, no, no, don't drive, don't drive, don't drive. Sainsbury, will you fuck up? If I hear one more thing from you, I'm gonna... Jan ended up driving anyway. And, uh, and uh, to cut a long story short... Yes, you, the funny-looking one from... Not you, yeah, the funny-looking one from TV3. And, of course, Darren McDonald turned up, but... But as luck would have it, it was all just a dream. 
It turned out to be a pretty average day in the theatre yet until Soper mentioned a story that appeared on the now defunct NZ tabloid website. A question that not even Colonel Sanders was brave enough to ask. Watch the other journos squirm. Prime Minister, um, on a website today, a New Zealand tabloid, you're probably unaware of it, but it seems that this website can say virtually anything it likes about people in positions of influence or celebrity. And in it today, they run a very long story about your sexuality. Do you think it's right that a, a um, website company that's based offshore can say what it likes about people in this country and, and you can't do anything about it? I think it's scumbag behaviour and uh, consideration is being given to what to do about it. So you're thinking of taking legal action? I'm saying consideration is being given. Uh, the person concerned is an attention seeker. Uh, the question is whether you uh, uh, indulge him by giving him attention or not. Can you do anything about it, though, legally? It would seem I, I can... don't know. That's why I say it's under consideration. Since filming this item, the website in question has disappeared, and it turns out the allegations about the Prime Minister were part of a hoax designed to undermine the credibility of NZ Tabloid. For more on that story, check out publicaddress.net. And that's our program for this week. Coming up next week, we target consumer watchdog show Target and author and documentary maker Michael Moore. Ah, oh, sweet. Join us next Tuesday, 9.30, here on 2. From all of us at Eating Media Lunch, Fiddly Noon. Number 99. Hello everyone, I'm Lorraine Downs and I'm happy to wish you greetings from New Zealand. Lorraine Downs made us all so proud back in 1983. Why don't you just tell us about New Zealand? Well, New Zealand is a beautiful country. It's a very natural green country and if you like the easy outdoor life, then you like New Zealand. Miss New Zealand is Miss Universe. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.